Young people at a wedding are less boring than a lot of old relatives. Oh, really care. Keep still. Oh, here we are. Coming up to Geneva to investigate, Inspector. That bride who was shot at her wedding in the kidnapping of a banker. Two birds with one stone, we hope. Good to see you, Inspector. Thanks. How are you? Glad you arrived safe. Morning. Morning. I'll look after your bags. Oh, thanks. Right. In there. Did you have a good trip, Inspector? Yeah, it's pretty good. A little shaky over the mountains. You'll be getting straight to work, I imagine. Mm-hmm. The car's over here. Do you want me to drive you straight to the office? There I know you go. the chief wants to speak to I you. I bet he does. It seems to be urgent. Listen, you go ahead. I'll join you later if you don't if you mind. say so, Inspector. As you wish. Don't worry. Now look after my dog. I did a bit of snooping. It seemed that the banker was kidnapped by Marini. It wasn't easy. This will cover it. Thanks. Where's he being held? On a ship that's being broken up.
Yeah, what is it? Go see the old man. Anything goes wrong, kill him. Yeah. Sorry, I need your car. Get out, please. When will I get it back? I'm driving to Rome. You'll find it at police headquarters. You too, please, madam. But I... But all my luggage is in the car. Please don't lose anything. Don't worry, you get it all back safe and sound. You can enjoy it! 
watch this goddamn meeting. Tell him to call me. I'll be home in ten minutes. What's this? I don't like guys who poke around. I suggest you get out of here and don't come back. Well, in that case... No excuses. I don't care what went wrong. Find out who's responsible. Maybe he's tired of living. And another thing that cops in my hair again. Tatsy. Get rid of them. I don't care how.
Jeannie here? He's waiting on board. Yeah, yeah, all right. Just as you want. Very well. You'll have to excuse me. I'm expecting someone. I'll call you back tonight. The old buzzard got away. Yes, I heard. Everybody's talking about it. Marini's the one to worry about now. You gotta see that he doesn't talk. Do it any way you want, but don't make waves. Better make contact with our medical friend. Hand him this immediately. That thing he's working on, he'll have to finish quick. Tell him from me. Yeah. Oh, so I find him in the clinic? Yeah. Yeah, you'll find him on duty there at 8 o'clock in the morning. I'll Working with the nutcases about then. Okay. I'm not about to put up with your nonsense any longer. Yeah, that's what I buy insurance for. And I employ an accountant to cope with things like that. Now, if I'd been a fisherman like my father, I'd have some peace. And fish. Don't ridicule it. That's work for a man, fishing. Hard, honest work. Earning a living with the sweat of your brow. You seem to think life's a bowl of cherries. You want something, so you fire a gun. Boom. Very easy. Too easy. Think I'm happy in this work? Everything I do is revolting, and I have to do it because I'm forced to. That's my excuse. What's yours? You could be out of it. Trouble is, I bet you enjoy being a killer. Mr. Guinea. What is it? I got a tip-off. The customs officers are going to pay us a visit. I don't need to panic. Go store the merchandise, right, Mario? In the usual hideout. Okay. Why can't I say it, Tasty? You've only been here a day. And you've already caused one of the biggest screw-ups we've ever had in Genoa. God damn it. My intention was... I know what you're going to say. You managed to be mandy, and that's all right. But if you'd had the patience to wait for the squad to arrive instead of taking it on yourself, Maureen would certainly have been captured. Do you always dress in this manner? Yes. So somebody gives me a pay raise. You're not, by chance, one of those men who think the police should have a union, are you? No. I don't even support women's lives. I think I understand. Come into my office. Make yourself at home. Sit down. Now then. Let's get uh, down to brass tacks. You boarded that ship without a warrant. Then. You held up traffic all over the city for more than an hour. Then you left the victim of the kidnapping in the place you found him, along with the body of the man you shot. And as if all that wasn't enough, you had a knife fight in the street with a bunch of delinquents and afterwards let him go. Now don't try to tell me. That's not being a little bit extreme in any language, Tessie. Shall I go on? No. I think that's about all. Be kind to me, Tessie. I know you deserve a battle. Only, just calm down. I don't mind you being, shall we say, a little enthusiastic. But, you see, I have high blood pressure. And I want to retire one day in peace and quiet on the pension, eh? That's all. Rocky. I have a favor to ask of you. I don't believe I know what. You know what this is. Oh, you get it. All right. Hey, somebody wants you. Make the dead seat. Wait a second, will you? You remember me? Guglielmi. Uh, sure I do. The attorney who gets paid more than I do. <laughs> You're in the wrong game, Tetsy. Listen, I must have a word with you. Hmm. Okay, come on. So you think someone's trying to hush up the, uh, kidnapping case? Just a suspicion, but a very strong one. I was taken off the investigation just as I started tracing the money paid out for the ransom. Money that was being used in part for speculating investments in construction 
and in part for various illicit operations. A whole complicated setup that obviously involves a number of well-known citizens. It's amazing what they managed to smuggle. Arms, cigarettes, the traffic in precious stones and drugs. A lot of money that's literally keeping the underworld above water. What can we do about it? I can do nothing. You might be able to crack it open. I stumbled on a man who could be useful, named Sassy, a simple farm laborer with a huge construction site in his name down on the coast. They made him sign a contract in front of a notary. But I think it's a cover, and I want to find out who the real speculator is. Easy enough with a little work. But unfortunately, I have my hands tied officially. So I'll hand the file over to you, all right? See what you can make of it. Would you like some coffee? Yes, thanks. Here. Good, a message has been left for you in the main square of town in a telephone booth. What was that? Who is this speaking? The man who killed the bride. I didn't mean to wake you. Carry on snoring. If you must know, it's deep in thought. Yes, profound, but not thought. Anything new on the bride that was shot? No, nothing. Just details of the family, if you'd like to look. Here. What about the phone message? Ah, yes. The photograph was taken with a simple Polaroid in color. The Sphinx was merely a photostatic copy of a drawing. That's what we assume. Huh? Ah, by the way, I wanted to... Uh, go on gone right out of my head. Antonio, I know you get indigestion after lunch, but this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's it. Ridiculous. Like that plain clothesman with the mustache. I forgot to tell you. He's been following Marini's woman. He phoned him to say he's watching her now. No, where? How long has she been in there? 40 minutes. I'm gonna follow her. You go over there and find out what she's been up to, will you? phone outside with that? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Thanks. This is Tevsi in the street elevator under Portello Castelletto. Bring a squad car up to the entrance at the top, all right? Okay. Thanks. But I'm sure it'll be dangerous. No, that boat's so fast, no one can catch up with it. Well, all right. You'll have to let me know when, that's all. I will. nervous about. That's very humorous. Care to go on? Boss didn't make it so funny the way things went. He wasn't amused at all. You're getting old before your time. 
Listen, shithead, before you get too uppity, I'm owed a lot of dough and I want it tonight. You tell the boss that. You're not getting a cent. You can thank God he doesn't want what he's already given you. Be a good boy because it's difficult to find a place to hide, you know. You won't get away with it. I want it. All I'm owed tonight. And no tricks. Now you listen. You tell your friends to lay off of me or I'll take this and blow your stinking head open. Silver box like this is very rare these days. Like ah. it? Gorgeous. And the markings on this oscillate are very unusual, too. Why don't you go and put some of this on, girl? That's really a pretty one. I wouldn't know which to choose, honestly. I hope there's a leopard. They cost the earth now. Get your husband to buy you one. This kidnapping was the best thing that could have happened. You know how many votes it's going to mean? I've got to find out who I can count on. I'm on your side, you know that. You and I grew up together, but business is business, and you can't ask me to stop working the auto route. It'd take an act of God to do that. <laughs> I'm not asking. I'm telling. This administration has got to go. There's nothing like Leopard, I tell really? you. Oh, I've got to have the people begging me to take over. I know. But then we'll settle a few accounts. Let axes all work out. <laughs> this one is a splendid jacket. Would suit almost any occasion. Well, have you made up your mind? That one. Mrs. Delara. The brown one. One there, and another one here. Oh. You find another message from the Sphinx in Via Sarotti, the post office, box five. You want to hear it again? What do you think? It's up to you if you want. The voice is middle-aged with an undefinable accent, though it could be from around these parts. He uses a rather ordinary everyday intonation, though he has certain difficulties with his H's and S's as if reciting or trying to hide his normal way of speaking. That much help you. Thank you, Tomasi. Any time, sir. Listen to the message again and study it. You never know. Oh, Tomasi, record me a copy, will you, and send it okay, over. Okay, will do.
Antonio, is that you? How's the digestion? No, much better, thanks. I don't need a thing. You need anything? Between snacks, have you found any connection between the murdered bride and the architect? Not only that the bride's uncle is an important man, very well known here, Mario Borelli, the cement king, who, of course, knew the architect because of his work. Inspector, Tansy of Criminal Pro. Ah, now then, Tansy, would you like a cigarette? You want to know something about poor old Mate, is that right? Yes, I met him a couple of times in the office. Just a business acquaintance, nothing further. But do you really think there's a connection between his death and that of my niece? They were killed with the same gun, according to ballistics. So connection seems to exist. Yes, it seems so. But you can be sure of one thing. My poor niece never even heard his name mentioned. That's about all I can tell you. If you need me for anything at all, I'm here. Feel mm -hmm. free to call me. Thanks a lot. What is it? Terzi here. An anonymous call. Marini's gone to the house with a woman he keeps. What did I tell you first? Thanks, Antonio. I'll buy you dinner. What about my diet? When do I get the coffee? Hey, Franca. Here you are. Listen, I've spoken to one of our friends. And I think I've come up with a very good idea, darling. I think the place to go is Corsica. We'll be safe there. Corsica? Yes, you've been. It's a super place, Tally. And a bit of a vacation isn't a bad idea. No, no. It's too risky together. Still, maybe you could join me later. How about asking your sister Angela to lend us some money? She has no more. She gave you every cent that she'd put by, and that's the truth. I'll bet she has some here. Somebody's there. Maybe I should go and answer it. Find out what they want. I'll stay here. Go on. What? Who's there? The neighbor. Satisfied, Mr. Nosey? There's no one else around. Shh. 
The respectable Mr. Benzie is a swine who should be destroyed for the good of this city. If he doesn't commit suicide in public, I will be forced to kill a great many innocent people. Well, this is ridiculous. Yes, that's precisely what I say. That Sphinx character isn't fooling, though. Remember, he's already murdered two people. You better call the chief of police, Bellini, and say that I want to see him right away. And I'd like to ask you if you'd be good enough not to publish this letter, at least not yet. You're asking a big favor, sir. You must understand, I can't suppress a story like this from my readers. I know, I know. I only need 24 hours in order to give us time to trace the Sphinx if we can. Having already sent us this message, you'll await uh, publication of it, which would allow more time for us in which to act. That much I'll give you, but only 24 hours. I can't make it any more because I'm not the only one with that information. That's all I wanted. You're very kind. Go get me Ted. Find him and have him come here as soon as possible. Uh, what are you asking for? 300. Isn't that a bit steep? I wouldn't say so. You have to consider the quality of the emeralds. They're perfectly cut and the settings beautifully designed. Can I see you, sir? Excuse me. What is it? One of our trucks has been stolen from the docks. Huh? It'd be a good idea if you came down there. Besides, there's something going on at police headquarters. Your job is to try and find out who the hell is trying to pull a fast one. Meantime, keep in touch. I'll handle the rest. All right, that's settled then, Mr. Parodi. Send round the necklace and the ring. You know where I'm at. Yes, certainly, Mr. Keeney. If you'll permit me, sir, may I suggest to go break? Good morning. If you have any news, get in touch. Yeah, sure. Police headquarters, who do you want? Never mind, you'll do. Listen. Excuse me, who is this? The Sphinx, you stupid girl. I'll speak to anyone you want. Don't you know who the Sphinx is? Hold on. Hello? Who is it? Let me ask the questions. I want to know who you are. Inspector Terzi. Oh, good morning, Inspector. Now, I have a few things to tell you. Most important things. So don't interrupt me. Keep him talking. Keep him talking. You've held a publication of my message that was very stupid. You'll be sorry you didn't listen. I am going to blow that news office into the next world. And there's nothing you can do. Listen, Sphinx, I assure you, your message hasn't been suppressed in any way. It'll be in the press tomorrow. All right, let me have it. It was a phone booth, and he hung up before I was able to trace the damn thing. There wasn't enough time. Now what? There's no point in worrying over anything except the Sphinx. And that's an order now, all right? Arrange to have a guard set up at that newspaper office. Don't you think we ought to uh, meet Benzie? After all, he's the Sphinx target, so there must be a connection somewhere. That's not your business. Benzie is the president of the Bankers Trust. You'll be a candidate to the next election. In other words, an untouchable. Mm. There's always some big shot at the bottom of it all. Dad, see, you can never be objective. You're suspicious of everybody. I'll do all I can to arrange a meeting with Benzie. If I manage it, I'll tell you. Oh, there he is. Just got him in time. 
Harry is about to drive off. The hunt for the Sphinx, killer of the journalist Bernardi, the young bride and the architect, is keeping the entire city of Genoa in a state of tension. Chief of Police Spallini is here in the studio to make the following statement. I appeal to the press, first of all, not to dramatize the unpleasant situation. That is, to respect the obvious seriousness of the case by avoiding false alarm and the chaos so easily created by mass media. As far as our investigations are concerned, we in the police force are, are aware that this unknown killer is capable of the unexpected, and so we are prepared for surprises. However, I would like to point out to the public that we have in the past coped with much worse cases, and the danger will soon be over. And now, we can move ahead. You know our plan, gentlemen. Come in, Inspector. Ah, I think you know Inspector Tetsy. Our paths have crossed. Well, then, the reason we've come here is to attempt to... Let's get one thing straight. This maniac doesn't scare me. What I want to know is, what does your kidnapping have to do with the Sphinx? What Inspector Tess is trying to say is, well... Can you tell us what the Sphinx may have against you, if anything? Anyone in my position is automatically a target for these nuts. Well, I'm sure it's not every day you get a request to commit suicide. I've got political enemies, but I... Can't imagine anyone wanting me dead. If you don't mind my saying so, we have to try every angle while investigating. However, it seems a good idea to keep a guard on you for your own safety, I think. I don't know. I... It's the best thing, believe me. You better stay and make arrangements as we plan, and I'll see you back at the office. Goodbye, sir. I don't want to be disturbed. Tertsy? How much do you make? A fortune. It's incalculable. <laughs> I like you. Because you're intelligent. I may be able to use someone like you soon. I only know how to do one job. I don't believe that. Anyway, you, uh, think it over. Scotch? We're setting up a new security force. You might find the work very interesting. Anyway, you wouldn't risk spending the end of your days in Sicily because some superior didn't like the color of your necktie. <laughs> no chance of that. I got friends in high places. seem a bit young to be shooting people down. Why? Is there an age limit for killing? I guess not. It's not how old you are, but what your motive is. And you? You must have had a motive for killing my sister. Your sister? And who was she? She lived with Marini. You're way off. I had nothing to do with it. You see, it was Marini who shot her. She ran between us. I'm sorry. You got away from me. Because of your sister. She fell against me when he shot her, and I tried to help her. You're lying. I don't care if you believe me or not. I haven't time to convince a kid. I'm not a kid. I know a liar when I see one. I know what happened. You shot her in cold blood because she got in your way. Marini told me himself. When did he say that? I don't... When did he tell you? <laughs> Go on. You won't make me tell you. Tell me. When? When? A few hours ago. Where? 
Uh, in Savona, at the sporting club, they be me. Is this it? Number five, all yes, right? Fine. Thank you. Is the manager here? Yes. Call him, would you? One moment. There's a gentleman here to see you, sir. Anything I can do for you? You know someone called Maureen? No, no, afraid not. I want to know where he is. Tell me or you'll be dead. The door over beside the mirror.
usual enigma. To warn us of his next move. Exactly. And what is it? He's trying to muddle us with symbols. Last time, there was St. George's Palace. It's the head office of the Banker's Trust. And now, after the chickens flown the coop, we know he used that symbol as a way of pointing to Benzie, president of the company. Yes, only I can't imagine what Dante can mean unless he wants us to read the whole of the Divine Comedy. How do you expect to know what goes on in a maniac's mind? He's a maniac, but I have the impression there's more to it than we think. Come on, let's go. The school. Come on, Whiskey, you may be able to help. Did you find what you were looking for, sir? Yes, thank you. I won't need these anymore. You can take them away. If he doesn't commit suicide, I'll blow up half of Genoa. Hello. Hello. I'm Terzi. I know you can hear me, so talk. 
This telephone isn't hooked up to the police, so there's nothing to be afraid of. Go ahead. Speak, go on. Huh? Stop fooling around and listen. If this is some kind of joke, you're wasting your time and mine. However, it could just be that you're a lunatic with a mania to kill. A maniac. Coward without the guts to be seen. You'll gain nothing with insults. Listen, I don't know why you're doing all this, but I must judge you on what you've done. You could never understand. But there's no point in doing what you're doing. There's more point to it than a lot of things going on in the city. More point than you'll ever know. Couldn't we come up with a solution? There is no solution. Other than the death of Benzi. I want his suicide. Or this whole city gets blown to hell. You've got until Sunday, no later. Pretty damn clever. Thought you'd be better off on your own, huh? I admire guys who've got initiative, but not when they use it against me. I trusted you. It's a shame you had to go and bite the hand that fed you. Go on, on your feet. Ever look at my hands, boy? I had to put them to work when I was a very young man, see? I started out straight, and I had to work hard. Something you never did in your whole life. Thought it was a nice, easy way to make a buck pinching that truck for me, eh? Huh? Oh, no. Well, you should see the way you look now, my friend. Pitiful. There's a phone call for you. Okay. What should we do with them? That's up to you, but don't make it noisy. The usual treatment, huh? speaking. No, you idiot. I said tonight. Is that clear? May I come in? What is it, Ruggieri? If you don't mind, there are a couple of checks for you to sign. Let's have a look. You know what they're for. Now, tell me. The bill for the land on the Riviera and the subdividing of lots in Brianza. Very well. What's this? The overhead. Ah, by the way, sir, shall I make investments with the Colo money or have it paid into the Swiss account? Neither, thank you, Ruggieri. Put it all in my own personal account. But what about your partner? My partner has other worries, Ruggieri. That's all for now. Here you are. Bon appetit. Come on. I don't get it. Maybe he isn't hungry. I'm no housewife, I guess. No, he's a creature of habit, that's all. Very temperamental. <laughs> I'm sorry. I try. What I prepared was good enough for us. Yes, I'm sure it was. Now, watch how he comes dashing over. Whiskey, shot time. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Bravo. I'll set the table now. Huh? Yes, this is Terzi. Mark, I've got the proof. Yeah. I know who's responsible for the kidnappings of Colo, Calanchi, and Gambos. I also know where the money is. Part of it is invested in chunks of land for construction and development. And part of it was plowed back into the underworld, as I thought. Arms, drugs, contraband cigarettes. It's all here in black and white. Yes, all right then. But I have the feeling they're on to me. I'll be right over. Don't budge. Okay, see you soon. Yes? It's no good trying to save Guglielmi, because I'll get to him first. Who's there? Hello?
post office. Box five. It's no good trying to save Kuliami, because I'll get to him first. You'll find another message from the Sphinx in Via Sarotti, the post office. Box five. I'm baffled by your obstinacy, Tetsi. Ballistics has just confirmed that the bullet that killed Guglielmi is of the same caliber used by the Sphinx. Now, that's not a coincidence. Although there's no drawing of a pyramid this time beside the Sphinx. Never mind. What do you expect? Do we keep sending bullets to ballistics while the bodies pile on the debit side of the Sphinx? Now, let's see. Today is Friday. He's given us two days' ultimatum. And by the way, don't forget that Benzie opens that hospital in half an hour. No, oh, I'll be there. Ah, and get this, Tessie. I don't deny your supposition. Perhaps the Sphinx is a cover-up, as you say, for something much more obscure and dangerous. But I cannot support the idea, I refuse to support the idea, Tetsi, that anybody like Benzie, you see, regardless of his status and importance, can be forced into committing suicide. Or that people can start blowing up this town under us. I don't want panic, chaos, or car chases. I want the Sphinx, that's all. Whoever he is and whatever he represents. Is that clear? My friends, this is a happy and an important occasion. It marks the opening of one of the most modern and technically advanced buildings in all of Italy. Now, as you know, it's always been my sincere wish to further the development of our beloved city. Well, in that connection, I'm availing myself of the opportunity to announce my candidacy for mayor in the next elections. Nothing concrete yet. We're still groping around on hunch. Yeah, but uh, the, the... we're not having much luck at giving a face to the Sphinx. Maybe we should start taking this thing seriously. Don't you think someone put him up to it? No. I mean, he could be doing all this for somebody else. I don't think anyone put him up to it. The Sphinx is a lunatic acting on his own. It's possible, but it's a bit difficult to believe a man like you with what I know about you. that? One of my associates recommended him. Publicity. A necessary nuisance. If it's publicity you're looking for, I can give you plenty. All about Milan, and the rainy, and the drug scene. Wait a minute. A couple of characters. Use my export-import business for, a, for their dirty work. I wasn't involved. I was cleared, and all counts. Remember that. You managed to get off, but I haven't forgotten. Don't worry, your time will come. We haven't seen the last of each other. Borelli and Benzie know each other intimately. Borelli's filthy cash in Benzie's bank. Anything else I can do for you, Inspector? What type of rapport did you have with Mr. Bates? I'm a client of his bank. Everyone knows that in Genoa. You made a quick rise from the ranks. Foreman to boss of the works in a few years. What are you trying to insinuate? All I have to do is pick up that phone and you're in trouble. And I'd be happy to examine your account books to get the same result. But let's try to keep calm because the price of phone calls was just raised. What do you want from me? Bensie. 
Benzie? 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 This is getting to be an obsession. I met him in Milan. When he was in industry. But we didn't meet again for years. I work for a living. That's how I got where I am today. I do too. Yeah, you. Then one day I saw him again. In the bank. Alone. And Mate? Now what on earth do you want to know about Mate? He got his cement from you. Yes, what of it? When did he begin? How am I supposed to know? Young man, listen. I refuse to answer any more questions without the presence of my lawyer. Oh, come on. There's no need for that. I'm not putting you under arrest. At the moment, at least. Inspector, you've overstayed your welcome. You know the way out. I found a shortcut. I've got it. And I found it. It's easy, easy, Simmer easy. Down. The first job that Matei did with Borelli cement was for Mr. Benzie. A shortcut. A bridge that collapsed eight months after it was built. Three people were killed on the way to a wedding. A terrible tragedy. The father of the bride, one of the guests, and the bride. The bride? Yes, the accident claimed my poor Maria. We had the same name, Maria Clerici. I lost my son and my granddaughter. And her mother died soon after of a broken heart. But what happened to the man who was about to marry her? Andrea. Oh, poor devil. He came to a sad end. After some months, he was put in an asylum. He's still there. Andrea Gatti. Andrea Gatti. Andrea Gatti. 38 years old. He was sent here four years ago. There's nobody registered here, I assure you, under the name Andrea Gatti. You see, this is a clinic for the rich. And I believe you mentioned that this person was not very well off. That's right. However, if you should happen to remember him, I can be found at headquarters. Yes, of course. Goodbye. Have you sent the chauffeur to Villa Torlonia to pick up Mussolini yes, yet? Yes, of course, Your Highness. He should be halfway there already. I hope so. He's a man with quite a temper, but he rewards punctuality. Yes, Mr. Dr. Martin. I must speak to Gini at once, do you hear? I haven't come to the phone. It's urgent. Ah, you seem to have recovered your memory. Has it all come back? Now then, who was it who paid for him here? Eh? I don't know. I only know the money arrived every month. I no questions. Goddamn blabbermouth at the booby hatch has evidently said something to the police. You, Armando, you have to put things straight. I think I'll disappear for a couple of days. I should give give you time to get rid of those supplies in store. Yeah, get everything on the boat and put out to sea. <laughs> sure, you do that. Same as ever. I trust you. Go on. Fine. This is a bitch in heat. It was going so smooth, damn it. Hey, you got a light? Huh? I want to keep this. See you next week in Lugano. Very well, Mr. Gini. Take a leg. You heard the man.
What's all the shooting about? I don't know. Go up there and get behind him. I'm only the accountant. All right, so tell me everything. And don't leave out anything. Is that clear? Wait a minute, will you, sir? I'll tell him you're here and ask if he'll see you. Thank you. Come in now. Thank you.
Come in. Come in, Terry. Have you seen the paper? No. I haven't had time yet. There's one. Have a look. I suppose to spare the city, I'll just have to commit suicide, right? Yeah, it might be the best thing. He's a maniac! If he is, he's a bright one. I expect the reason he's asking such a lot of you is to pay for the collapse of a crowded footbridge. You know, he's planted three bombs in the city. You better find him fast. Ah, uh, don't worry. You don't happen to have the address of that photographer, do you? The one who was sent by your partner that day. I want to ask him something. Louisa! Louisa! What the hell are you doing? Oh, I'll get it for you. came to read the gas and left you this. Nothing else? No. Funny, I paid the gas bill only a week ago. It was the Sphinx, San Remo, on an ordinary postcard. And an advertisement for an orange drink. Can I have a look? Let me see. He's giving you a clue to go, I suppose. Yeah? Why the orange drink, then? A bar there somewhere. No. Mm. The bar at the station. No, that couldn't be it. Well, a factory that makes orange aid in San Remo. No, the Sphinx always uses symbols in his messages. Let's see if there's a clue. San Remo's where they have a song festival. Um, a gambling casino. Or it's known as the City of Flowers. That's more like it. Keep talking. It's the City of Flowers. But of course, the flowers. Orange blossom. Weddings, you know. The church. But which? The one he was supposed to get married in, of course. We've only a few hours left. He gave us a little time. And there's another bomb to find. God knows where. Excuse me, sir. Tessie's on the line. He found the bomb. Good Lord. Tessie, where the devil did you find it? You'd better moderate your language, sir. I found it in the church. I don't believe you. It's true. And he left another clue, too. Well, get back here as soon as you can. All right, sir. I think we should call a meeting. Yes, it might be a good idea, but with time running short. Very well. Better see where you are. Only I suggest you keep in touch. I'll keep in touch. There's another message. What does it say? See if you understand it. Read it. You're a very smart boy, but I bet you won't find the next one. I've already given you the clue, and if you're still here, it means you haven't understood a damn thing. You've been wasting your time and energy. Goodbye. Is that all there was? Yes, that's it. What do you do? God knows. That's what I'm wondering. Come on, Angel. Hey, I'm the press. Oh, I'm come sorry. In. Not a chance. Look, I got a pass. I'm paid to keep you vultures out of here, and that's what I'm going to do. I wouldn't write anything damaging to Mr. Benzie. The public has a right to hear the truth. Well, let's go. Listen, I have to get in. No exceptions. Not even ladies. Go on, it's my job. I... Huh? 
Huh? Do you know if Benzie's going to commit suicide? Really or not? I mean, uh, uh, are you mad, sir? No, are you? A man was here to read the gas, and he left you this. The gasometer. What did you say? The bomb's on the gasometer. Hello, Terzi here. The bomb's on the gasometer. I'm heading there now. I'll inform the chief. Don't anybody fire a shot unless I give the order. Don't panic. It's important to keep calm. Try to find Inspector's head. Yes, sir. In case you need it, here's a bulletproof vest. Be useful. You better use this, sir. No, I... I think I'd just as soon wait in the cellar. The time limit runs out at noon in just 12 minutes. That doesn't give us long. Inspector Terzi's nowhere to be found. What do you mean he can't be found? Sorry, sir, but nobody's seen him. Will you come down, Scotty? Can you hear me up there? I can't make any promises for the moment. But if you'll come down, we'll hold our fire. We're almost there now. You get ready and I'll remain hovering until you let go. Okay, but keep it smooth, will you? My God, what's that maniac trying to do? That maniac is Terzi. But I'll be a...
We must distract the Sphinx. Get the sirens going. no more than a paragraph in the newspapers to them. We're just ants who do their work for them. But I have feelings, feelings, that drove me to seek revenge, to mete out just a little bit of justice. Yeah. And you can't tell me that the law would have done it for me. The law protects the bendies, respected rich killers, gentlemen with blood on their hands. <laughs> I don't blame you. But it's over now and we have to go down. It's finished. There's no alternative. Get back, get back. Don't crowd in like that. It's him, it's him. Inspector, do you have a statement? What happened up there? I have no statement to make. Please leave me alone. Oh, sure. No, I'm not in the mood. Back. A few words to describe how you felt. You took quite a risk, Jack. I'm very pleased with what you did. The same is difficult to say of you. <laughs> Your sharpshooters killed him when he surrendered. Come on, Tatsy. For God's sake, don't start getting sentimental at this point. Sentimental? You mean human. Hey, would you let us get a shot for the newscast? My compliments. Just the man I'm looking for. <clears throat> what the hell are you doing? I have a bone to pick with you. If you think I swallowed that pack of lies you wrapped around yourself for protection, you're wrong. Tetsy, you going crazy. There's cops on him. My God, Tetsy. Let me introduce you to the kidnapper general. These are some of the checks countersigned by the respected citizen, Mr. Bainsey, which proves his dirty dealings with Gini. Yeah. Get another picture. Now, you asshole. Put the handcuffs on him. Yes, sir. 
Yeah. Yeah. Respected Mr. Bent, yeah? Dad, listen, how is it that you got there? Proof that he was in back of it all? That's a secret between me and Ganey's accountant. If that's to my resignation, there'll be a statement. I'm not accepting a resignation from you yet. I want to know about the stinks. No, he was just a poor devil who worked on and used by Ganey in order to get rid of Bainsey. My congratulations, Ted. Here. There's no need for that. I'm resigning. Oh, come on, Patsy. That poor devil was better off dead. He was a menace to the safety of the city. You know that there were the lives of many people at stake. Mark! Are you leaving? Where are you going? Long way from here.